Well, Merry Christmas. We want to uh, thank you for listening. Trust you're having a great day with your family and friends and loved ones and, uh, and with the Lord. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Lord, born of a virgin. The Lord had humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Lord, you became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld your glory. <clears throat> Lord, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. And we celebrate that today, and we think of you, Lord, as we uh, rejoice in our salvation. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Merry Christmas. And uh, if you look at Luke chapter 2, um, I want you to look at the first four words of Luke chapter 2. And I just want to share quickly with you uh, a beautiful truth. And it says in verse 1 of Luke chapter 2, and it came to pass. And, and that's the message of, of this little devotion. It came to pass. All these things came to pass. Genesis 3.15, a, a seed was promised to God. He said to Satan, I'll put enmity between your seed and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head and he will bruise your heel. Isaiah 7.14 told us that a virgin would conceive and bear a son. Micah 5.2 says that, that this ruler would be born in Bethlehem. And Isaiah 9, 6 says a child would be born and, and it would be upon the throne of David. And all these promises came uh, to pass uh, on that day in Bethlehem. Uh, we talked the last couple of weeks about the virgin conception and talked about Mary and visiting Elizabeth. And, and today uh, we look at the, the, the birth itself. And it came to pass and those day a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. Caesar Augustus, the adopted son of Julius Caesar, uh, was one who liked to collect taxes. Uh, unusual for a government man, wasn't it? And one of the ways he would do was have everybody registered and he'd keep track of everybody. And say so they would go to their, uh, uh, the, the, their, the home of their ancestors. Uh, in this case, it was uh, the city of David for Joseph and Mary, Bethlehem itself. And they would, they would travel just by coincidence to the very place Micah tells us the Savior would be born. We know from uh, Christmas Eve message that, that she carries the Lord, the Savior, the Messiah in her womb. And in verse 2, the census first took place while Quirinus was uh, governing uh, Syria. So they all went to be registered to their own city. Joseph went up to Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be registered with Mary. So it came to pass that Mary and Joseph just happened to be in Bethlehem because of the political things that were going on. And it just came to pass that Joseph happened to be in the very line and lineage of King David in which the Messiah would come. So all of the things and all of the promises of the Old Testament are going to come to pass. Just like everything in the future that God promises uh, from the return of Christ to glory in heaven, they will come to pass. Don't doubt them. Grab onto them and, and rejoice in them. Uh, look at the second part of verse 5. It says, His betrothed wife who was with child. So it was while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the end, so many people were there to be uh, registered and people were traveling and they just uh, took a long time to get there. She was with child. It was about a 70 mile trek from um, Nazareth to Jerusalem through mountainous areas. And uh, one that, that perhaps Mary uh, made anticipating Micah 5-2 being, being fulfilled. 
Uh, but it came to pass what it was said of Jesus in Philippians 2, 7, that he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of the bond surface. He came in the likeness of man, and Jesus could have come in, in, in the son of a, of a queen. He could have come in, born in a palace. He could have come born in, in, in a wealthy man's home. But he chose to show us the humility that Philippians 2, 7 talks about, in which he who uh, knew no sin is going to become sin for us. And he who was equal with God made himself of no reputation, born in a manger. And who knows whether it was in a barn or a cave, or and we just know that she wrapped him tightly in those swaddling clothes, which is a normal thing to do, and but laid him in this trough of an animal. How humble it was, that birth of Christ. Verse 8 is incredible. It says, when there were at the same time, same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night, behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Uh, you know, the Bible says that that. The word became flesh in John 1, 14 and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. And so this glorious vision. And notice that, you know, when we see this nativity scene, you know, we see the wise men. But really, the it, wise men didn't show up till you know, a couple of years later. But they were lowly shepherds, the humble. The Bible says that the Lord resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And he, he proclaims this great announcement to these shepherds working in the field. And they were afraid. Why? Would, what is this side? You can't really blame them. Um, verse 10, the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you in the city of David a Savior who was Christ the Lord. Uh, this announcement of these angels to these wise men. Don't be afraid. I'm going to bring, I, I bring you good news. That's, that's what the word gospel means. It's good news. Well, the bad news was, was Genesis 3, the fall of man. The good news was the promise by God that he would send a seed to crush Satan once and for all. And that seed would be Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel. Paul says, I declare to you the gospel that, that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Many fear religion. Many fear church. Many fear the, the Bible. Many fear Christ. Well, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but when you know Jesus, that fear is, 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 is alleviated. John 14, 7, 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus gives us a peace that passes all understandings, uh, Philippians 4. And so uh, they were sore afraid, but then he says, no, don't be afraid. Because there's born to you in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. There's that, that word Savior again. Jesus came to, to seek and to save that which is lost. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for. And he is the Lord. Emmanuel says his name would be God with us. He shall be called Emmanuel. So he is the Lord. He's the Savior. He's the Messiah. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's everything. And the shepherds are being told this. And, and they respond in verse 12. It says, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Suddenly there was a, a multitude of, of heavenly hosts 
And that word host there is, is, is actually a, a Greek word for army. These armies of angels rejoicing. Uh, and yet it's not an army that, that's bringing war. It's an army that's bringing peace, goodwill towards men. And, and that's an interesting phrase. It actually means uh, peace, goodwill, to, peace towards men of goodwill. So that peace is, is not to, to all human beings, but peace to those who find and walk in the will of God. When you are in the good will of God, there's peace. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't know this, this child, Jesus Christ, as the Lord, the Messiah, the King, the Savior, uh, then you need to go to God for that peace that peace of mind, that, that making your peace with God, that I know if I died today, I'd be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Um, do you know this? Um, Jesus says, I'm the resurrection of life. He that believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And, and that's what it comes down to. Do you believe in this Emmanuel, this child, this baby, this Lord? Well, if you look at verse 15, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass was the Lord made known to us. Their response was, we believe it. It's come to pass. And, and this is the, the tricky part of Christmas. We celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, and we sing the Christmas carols uh, of, of silent night, and we, we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and we see all those, those beautiful songs away in a manger. Uh, but do we believe them? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. At 1631, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that he is risen from the dead, you will be saved. It all comes down not to telling the story or hearing the story, but believing the story. And, and that's why I say to you this morning, this has come to pass. This happened. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, and he gave his son in the most miraculous way possible and the most humbling way possible that he uh, overshadowed Mary and, and God placed his only begotten son within her womb. And she carried that baby as she trekked through uh, uh, the, the trail towards Bethlehem. And without any place to stay, she found a manger and swaddling clothes and gave birth to that child and placed him uh, in that manger. In Bethlehem, as the Bible said, what happened. See, if you read the history books, there's no doubt there was a man named Jesus. There's no doubt that this man named Jesus died on the cross. The question is, was he born of a virgin? Did he die and rise again the third day? Yes. All those things came to pass. And these shepherds know and trust what they were told by God. And the question is, do you trust it? Verse 16, they came in haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, just as God said. They weren't far from them. These aren't the wise men following the star. These are humble shepherds in a field running to this manger. And all those who heard it marveled at the things which were told them by the shepherds. Can you imagine? An angel's king, as we knew. See, this is the, 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 the scene. 
a little different than, than we see uh, displayed in nativity scenes. But Mary, uh, in verse 18, and those who heard it marveled, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now she's been carrying this baby for nine months. It's been a while since she was visited by Gabriel and went and saw Elizabeth and Elizabeth's baby leaped in the womb. And, and now here, Mary, the morning has come, Christmas morning, the true Christmas morning. And, and it's not a prince, not a king, not a prophet, not a priest, not a wise man, but shepherds. And they come to her in confirmation that this is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And she ponders these things in her heart. And I would ask you to do the same on this Christmas morning or evening, whenever you're listening to this, that you would ponder the validity of the birth of Christ. See, it's, it's not a fairy tale to me, but this is the truth of, of the miracle of God, that this baby is born not with the sin passed from Adam, but born holy. His blood is without spot and without blemish. And this child would grow. And as this child grows, um, he will begin to do miracles and begin to, to speak the truth. And then he will fulfill his purpose for being on earth. And he'll die on the cross. And he'll become sin for us. And then he'll be buried in a rich man's tomb, as prophets say. And then he'll rise again. And he's ascended into heaven and he's coming back. While it has come to pass this birth, it has come to pass his death, it has come to pass his resurrection, it will come to pass that he will return. What a miracle. So ponder it. Pray about this. Go to God, and, and maybe you don't pray very much. Maybe you don't talk to him. Let's say, God, is, is this true? Is what this crazy man is talking about, is it, is it true? Did it really happen? That was my prayer. God, I got to know. I was pondering it. It was Easter Sunday, and the death, burial, and resurrection was on my mind. And, and I had known about it, but I, I was just focused on it because it was Easter, and I was in church. And I just ask God, God, if it's true, if you're truly the Lord, why wouldn't I serve you? And I just knew right away. I regret that I have failed him so many times, but I love him. And I, and I love this book. And verse 20, the last verse of the day, we'll share, which says this, then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told him. See, we've been told so many marvelous things in the scriptures about our Lord and about Jesus and about what's coming. And if you trust it, you'll be praising God. You'll be rejoicing. See, on this Christmas day, if, if you believe that the story of the baby Jesus has really come to pass, then what a, what a day that, <laughs> to celebrate. What an event you have to rejoice over. And I trust that if you know Jesus Christ, that you will spend this day praising God for all the things that you've seen him do in your life and all the things you've heard that he's going to do. All the things that are, are ahead of you in this new year. So I leave you with this one very simple Christmas message. It came to pass. All these things you're celebrating today, all these things you're talking about, all these things you're singing about, they happen. And all the things in the future, heaven, presence of Christ, the return of the Lord, they will come to pass. So look for that blessed hope and rejoice today. 
celebrate, open presents, have a feast, laugh, and love your family. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this incredible gift that we have. God, you so loved us that you gave us your only begotten Son, that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that he became flesh and dwelt among us and humbled himself and came in the form of man. And because of this, Jesus is the, the name of all names. There's no other name under heaven given among men by which we can be saved. And I pray, Lord, if anybody here this morning on this Christmas day might hear this message and not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, not know that, that these things have come to pass and not know the praise and the joy of, of complete peace in our salvation that they would know today in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas. Have a great day and God bless you.